Hi folks, in this video we are going to create a lot of our application from scratch using nothing but docker. If you don't have docker installed, go ahead and install it. There are installation guides in the docker documentation and you can choose your OS of choice and follow the steps there. If you go to the Laravel documentation and see the installation steps for creating your Laravel application, you will notice that it requires a few things like PHP and Composer installed locally, which is fine. But as I said, we are going to assume you have nothing but Docker locally. To create the application, we are going to be using Composer, but not Composer directly. We are going to use it through Docker. There is an official Composer image that we can use to create our, our application. And yeah, let's go ahead and try it out. So we are going to use Docker and we are going to run a container from the image Composer. And I'm going to specify some flags here. So I want this container to be deleted as soon as it's not, no longer needed. And I'm also going to map a volume. Volumes in Docker is a way to share my local file system with Docker's. So files created inside the container are stored locally. And I'm going to share my current working directory with slash app. I'm also going to set slash app as the working directory for the container. This means that when whatever command I pass to the container, it will be executed from this path. So which command we are going to pass to the container if we go back to the Laravel documentation. So this is how we install Laravel via Composer. And we are going to copy this command, go back to the terminal and use that same command. But instead of blog, we are going to name the application Docker for Laravel. That was painful, right? Five minutes is, if you see here, it took almost five minutes and five minutes is not acceptable. It took that long because Composer downloads each dependency one by one. And since it's running in its own fresh file system inside the container, as the container gets its own file system, it will download each dependency from scratch without using any cache or anything. So that's why it took so long. Also, if you are on Linux, there is a gotcha here. If we check the permissions of the files, you will see that the files were created as root and we don't want that. That happens because inside the container, inside the composer container, we run commands as root, as the root user, who am I? Yeah, so I'm the root user here inside. And since I'm running Docker from Linux and there is no virtualization step between Docker and my actual OS kernel. So if I run as root inside the container and I create a file as root, it will be created on my local folder as root as well. It, this might not be a problem if you are on Mac or Windows since there is a virtualization layer. There are a couple ways that we can fix the permission issue. One of them is actually we can, you know, change the permission, change the ownership of the files. And I'm going to set this to be my user and my user group as well. So, and if we check the permissions again, we can see that I changed them to be mine. However, there is another way we can fix this and let's ditch this folder and try again. So the other way is to actually run that exact command that we did run, but we can specify another flag here, which is I'm going to specify the user and my user doesn't exist inside the container, but I can use the user ID, which I can get from this command, or I can rely on this environment variable and as the group. So if we just run this, we are going to run the, the same command that we did, but running as my own user, which will get the permission fixed. But we still have the problem with Composer downloading each dependence one by one. Well, it turns out there is a plugin for a Composer called Prestissimo that we can use. And Prestissimo, you install it like this globally. But luckily there is an image that we can use that is already has Prestissimo installed. So let's pull that image out. I'm gonna create another terminal here. So I'm gonna pull it and then we will be able to use it. Okay, it's done. And now we can actually use it. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna change the image of the container to instead of being Composer, it will use that image that we just pulled. And let's see how long it will take. So this time it took two minutes, which isn't great either, but it was way faster than previous time, which took five minutes. If you don't know Prestissimo already, it's a much faster way to interact with Composer because it, it downloads all dependencies in parallel. And that's going to be 
how Composer itself will do the things in the 2.0 version. But until then, we can use Prestissimo to have that. Going back to the folder, and if we list the permissions, we can see that we created the files already with the permission that we passed. However, there is a way we can actually gain a bit more speed here. So let's run it again. And this time, I'm going to use my local Composer cache. Turns out that I do have PHP and Composer installed, and I use it more often than not. And I do have a cache here. We can use that cache for all of our applications. And the way we can use it here is that we have to specify, like if we go back to the Composer image and we see the tag and we see, we see the Docker file. So here it sets the Composer home as, TMP, as the TMP folder. And what we can do is we can map our Composer home with this folder, more precisely our cache folder with this folder and Composer will use our cache when it's downloaded the dependencies. So let's do that. So we are going to use this command and we are going to map our home.cache.composer folder with slash tmp. And it's important that I do this with my user. So local cache doesn't get um, written as root. So let's see, we are still using Prestismo here. So yeah, even though we are not actually going to use to download anything. So let's see how long it takes. So this time it took only 48 seconds. And if we go back and see our permissions, all that is fixed. So yes, that was it. That's how you can create a lot of application without having PHP or anything installed locally. I do use my cache, but you can still use that. You can set up your own Composer cache if you want to. So in the next video, we are going to set up our local environment using Docker and Docker Compose. So I'll see you there.